give it to you worse. Iran. State leading terrorist, uh, the biggest sponsor of terrorism in the world. Iran. They've been helping North Korea. Folks, they've been helping North Korea. How do you think they've been able to get where they've gotten? These these people love each other. Long time. Not even kidding. Long time. Uh, the United States knows about this, and thanks to a tip of a high-ranking Somali official uh, that uh, went on and uh, talked about this, Minister of Foreign Affairs Yusuf Garland Omar sent to the U.S. ambassador to Somalia, Stephen Schwartz, revealed that the Al-Shabaab terror network and Al-Qaeda affiliate has connected uh, and with each other. They're, they're working together. Um, and uh, they're really planning something, folks, to make some money for their terror organization, and they're going to pay them like big bucks, according to this informant. But ISIS is capturing territory in Somalia. That includes uranium mines, folks. Just a concern. Only the United States, only the United States has the capacity to identify and smash Al Shabaab elements operating within our country. And that's what one official said there in Somalia. Uh, the time for surgical strikes and limited engagement has passed as Somalia's problems have metastasized into the world's problems. The letter said every day that passes without intervention provides America's enemies with additional material for nuclear weapons. There can be no doubt that global stability is at stake. Let's review. Iran has been uh, long had nuclear ambitions, which were supposed to back off from under the agreement made by the Obama administration. President Donald Trump has been vocally opposed to the continuation of the Iran nuclear deal, but his administration has twice uh, backed down. Uh, they're not as strong on Iran, despite strong objections from Trump himself. Most recently in July, for the record, the United Nations said, uh, uh, this is the UN, Iran is complying with the deal. I told you about that Fox News poll yesterday. How folks are very concerned about Trump. I don't know what's going on. Why we're not strong around Iran, but hopefully this new story with uranium, surgical strikes, are you kidding me? Folks, uh, you get that into the uh, Ayatollahs there over there in Iran and you give them some extra uh, doses of uranium, uranium uh, that's bad stuff. That's a power keg. No pun intended. The U.S. State Department had no comment on the letter, by the way, that I read but did not dispute that it was, wasn't was uh, authentic. This is according to Fox News. Uh, shining light on it, by the way, The Blaze, um, thanking them for their research on this and, and putting this out there. But uh, you can read parts of the letter from there and then on Fox News. But uh, pretty scary. Uh, we've got some pretty bad folks out there. And getting that into the wrong hands, uranium, you're kidding me? Of course, who do you think's going to buy it? That deal was terrible. I can't believe the UN. Come on, Nikki Haley thinks it's good? Oh, we're just buying uranium for our power source. Yeah, that's all. That's all it is. By the way, do not feel too bad for Barack Obama. You know, he's... Uh, he he hasn't been there to make you feel good about yourself. Giving you a good speech and a good pep talk. Shedding a tear. Whatever he can. <laughs> I love doing Barack Obama. You know I do. But anyway, uh, the former president will cost taxpayers, you and I, $1 million to be specific dollars next year according to a congressional research service memo now uh 
That amount will make Obama's expenses the highest of five living ex-presidents, according to the Washington Times, folks. Check it out. The highest of the five living ex-presidents. What's that number again? One million one hundred and fifty three thousand dollars. Now, the former President's Act, uh, which became law on the books in 1958, provides former White House occupants with lifetime benefits, which most of us know. After leaving the office, each president receives a base pension of 205700 annually, but the budget requires they submit to Congress uh, may also address additional expenses, such as for their staff salaries, office allowances, Travel and Secret Service protection. Obama's one million one hundred and fifty three thousand budget request for twenty eighteen is nearly one hundred thousand dollars more than that of former President George W. Bush, and around two hundred thousand dollars higher than say former President Bill Clinton. Former President George H. W. Bush has requested nine hundred and forty two thousand dollars in retrospect and while former President Jimmy Carter comes in at $456,000, the Times reported, a large portion of the former president's budget goes towards leasing office spaces such as the uh, $536,000 cost for Obama's office in Washington, D.C., $538,000 cost for Obama's office, $518,000 for uh, for Clinton's setup in New York City, $518,000 for the setup in New York City for Clinton, and $497,000 for Bush's 43 office in Dallas. Uh, that seems relatively a little bit cheaper than uh, Clinton's. Bush 41 space is much cheaper. That's located in Houston. I don't know if that was underwater, but that's costing $286,000 while. Carter space in Atlanta. Check this out. A relative bargain at only one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars, according to the Times. Wow. They all spend the money, but uh, Obama wants more. Interesting. Well, they're all entitled to have their Secret Service detail and their salary. I, mean, I don't want to take that away from them. you. Got one's got to live. Uh, President Trump is tweeting out this morning that he's going to return to Texas on Saturday. Praised all of the great men and women who have been working so hard after Harvey uh, wreaked devastation there. So he says, Texas is healing fast thanks to all of the great men and women who have been working so hard, but still so much to do. We'll be back. Texas is healing and Trump's visit comes as his administration is preparing a nearly six billion aid package to assist the state's southeast. Meanwhile, folks, a lot of people on the Twitter sphere, on Facebook, my own family, uh, showing some spaghetti models for Irma could be a Category Five, folks. It's the largest hurricane on, yeah, that you can have. That could be a reality. Could be hitting in Florida, could be the Gulf Coast, could go up the East Coast. Can you imagine a Category 5 here in Tampa Bay? Uh, you would see me underwater. Absolutely. And Tampa's just one of those towns where the seawall, uh, you know, we get a little tropical storm disturbance and uh, it's, it's they, they close it off where the seawall is. But uh, some of the images I saw in 04 uh, were Charlie and, and et cetera was going through. We had a back-to-back hurricanes, remember, in 04. It kind of reminds me of this year, but it seems like it's just worse with the intensities, with the, 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 the water temperatures just so high and the steering currents. All of this affects these hurricanes. It almost seemed like to myself a quasi-meteorologist, but I'm not. I'm just like you. I read the papers, watch the news, and you could do what I do. So anyway, uh, well, you you may not want to. You have to be here every day. (laughs) You want to help? That's fine. 
Yeah, you know where my studio is. I'm in Tampa. You have to be in the Tampa Bay area, though. Uh, come in, and, and uh, I will give you the microphone. It's all right. But we're watching Irma. We're concerned about Irma. I uh, don't want to get too freaked out about it, but, uh, you know, having some water, having some contingency plans or higher ground where you would go, uh, necessary, tank of gas, always topped off, and uh, have that bug out bag in case you got to get out of Dodge quick. But uh, the, the smartest thing is to watch the tropics, watch the uh, the hurricane center, uh, monitor the, uh, the TV, the radio, uh, don't completely go off the grid this Labor Day. Because you want to know what the heck is uh, if it's coming your way, you want to you want to you want to prepare for it. And God, I hope not. It would be insult to injury, and I don't wish anybody the storm. I I pray that it just goes out to be a fish storm out in the Atlantic. However, it would be so devastating. Could you imagine if this storm and it just was a frightful thought hit the Gulf Coast? I mean, can you imagine? Uh, the the insult to injury. I just. Uh, I don't wish it on anybody, but God, they, they don't need it. Back to back. Yeah, I'm not even going to give any more credence to that. Yeah, let me knock on wood. <laughs> if you're superstitious or do the salt shaker, somebody like that. I know. Why did I even bring it up? It's terrible. I know. I should shut up when I'm ahead here. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is kind of sad, but uh, knowing... Sheriff David Clark, one of the highest profile members of law enforcement there in Milwaukee County, he gave his resignation. Clark issued, well, actually a retirement statement, which is kind of like a resignation, to local media. Hours after his resignation was announced, almost uh, 40 years serving the great people of Milwaukee County, he says, I've chosen to retire and pursue other opportunities, Clark wrote. I will have a news. Uh, well, I'll have, I'll have news about my next steps in the near near future. It, it left people stunned. It left me stunned. But he must know that it was time for him to go. You know, there's a time where all of us will just walk away from what we do, and uh, we don't have to give a whole lot of explanation. But uh, the, knowing uh, Sheriff Clark, uh, he will have a, another job somewhere doing something. Uh, we just don't know exactly what it is. In June, Clark announced that he had rescinded, if you remember, an acceptance of a post, the Office of Public Engagement for the Department of Homeland Security. However, the office had never confirmed that it offered him the job, which he would have served as a liaison between DHS, the state and local law enforcement. So we don't know if he's going to join the Trump administration. But uh, if he does go to another city other than Milwaukee, uh, he's tough on crime, folks. Uh, a little controversial. From what I understand, there in Milwaukee, bologna sandwiches. Supposedly a handicapped person died in his custody, which is sad, died in his custody. But we don't, we don't know what happened, folks. We just hear what was said. But supposedly dehydrated, that he doesn't give water to his prisoners. Now... Uh, if that's true, that's just wrong. You, you gotta, you can deny him food, you can give him bloaty sandwiches, but a human being has to have water. And if the person died um, because of that, which again, I, 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 people say one thing, nothing was proven, so I, I, I have no idea if he directly did it. Uh, he denies that he had the prisoner go without water. I, I again, it would be a horrible thing if, if, if that was done. But again, I haven't seen anything and he wasn't prosecuted and wasn't charged or anything like that to that extent. He denies it. And a lot of people just did not like him because one, the man is conservative Two, he's black. Okay. Between the two and, and for some pockets in the United States. Okay. I have African-Americans that listen to my program. So, and they understand where I'm coming from, and uh, it's just, it's an oxymoron. Black, conservative, folks, I'm here to say there's a lot more conservative-minded African Americans and even minorities than you know that voted for Donald Trump because of common sense. 
common sense, folks. That's just it. Plenty of liberal.